Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Visitor Studio, and today I'm going to share with you how to create that duplicate outline text effect in DaVinci Resolve. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so in DaVinci Resolve right now we're on the edit page and we're going to start by bringing a new fusion composition in our timeline and then we're going to move over to fusion. Once in Fusion, we're going to start by bringing a new background in our working area and linking the output of that background to the media out. Then we're going to reduce the alpha channel down to zero so we gain transparency. Next, we're going to bring a text node in our working area and link the output of that text node to the background one. We're going to write something in our text node. So I'm going to go with share. I'm going to change the font for pop-in and I'm going to raise the size. Then I'm going to make a copy of my text by hitting command C and then I'm going to just right click and paste an instance. I'm making an instance to create the text outline. So I'm going to go over here to shading. I'm going to right click on appearance and I'm going to de instance to then be able to switch from fill to outline. And basically now we have one text being fill and the second one, the instance being an outline. We're going to then duplicate that outline. So I'm going to select my instance text. So then I'm going to hit shift space on my keyboard and I'm going to search for duplicate and I'm going to bring duplicate in my working area, bring it down below the instance, link the output of the duplicate to the background one. And then I'm going to bring back that text right here. In the duplicate, I'm going to make four copies. And then here in center Y, I'm basically going to drag that down to have my duplicate just move out from the center and create that multiple text effect. Here in the value, I'm actually going to try to be precise. I'm going to go with 0.35 because we're going to do the exact same thing here at the top and we want to keep a similar value to have similar spacing between each word. So here I'm going to copy my duplicate and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste instance once again. I'm going to link the instance text to that instance duplicate and then I'm going to link the output of that instance duplicate to the background one. Then in the instance duplicate, I'm going to go and de-instance the position. And so here we're at 35 and the initial value was 5, right? So instead of having 0, 35, right now we're going to go up by 15. So that's just going to be 65. So basically on the first one by having a value that is minus 0, 15 and then having the same thing but this time up here with a value of plus 15 so 0 0.65 we keep the same spacing here in between each word and why did i use an instance here instead of just a completely new duplicate it's just that there is some effect that could be done easily by having those two be linked for example here the blend we could have an animation going from you know the middle of the word uh, we could keyframe something on that or we could keyframe something on the position it just offer more possibilities down the line if you want to experiment with different type of animation instead of having to animate those duplicate individually so now we basically have the core of the effect the only thing that i want to go back to is here coming back to the instance and then reducing the thickness of the outline to have something that is a bit more discreet and create like a bigger contrast between the fill text and the outline text. So here I think 0 0.01 should be good. I'm gonna stick to that. And then here I'm gonna move the share right there to the side. Another thing that I'm realizing now that I want to do is going over to text and here I'm gonna anchor it to the left. So I'm gonna click right there, adjust the position again. We're doing that because we're going to create three text, share, like, and subscribe. And when we're going to change the text, we want to have everything staying aligned on the left side. So that's why we need to anchor it on the left side. Another thing now that I've created that core design is that I want to duplicate that two time without any keyframe. So I can create the same thing for the like and the subscribe one. So right now I'm just going to select everything, just copy it with command C. And then I'm just going to go uh, on the side and I'm going to paste it one time and then paste it a second time. And we're just going to bring it to the composition later on. All right. So now let's move on to the animation. I'm going to select my merge two. It shifts based on my keyboard. I'm going to search for a brightness and contrast node and bring that in. And then it shifts space again and search for a transform node and bring that in. I'm going to go to frame 12 and drop a keyframe here on the center position. And then I'm going to go to frame zero 
here make sure that my media out is showing so i can see properly what's going on and then i'm simply gonna just move the text uh, to the right side so now we're simply gonna have like a basic slide animation where the text is going from the right to the left then i'm gonna go to my brightness and contrast node select the alpha channel be on frame 12 drop a keyframe on the gain at one and then go to frame zero and drop the gain down to zero and now we have the beginning of our animation. Then I'm gonna go to my duplicate. And then here I'm gonna go to frame 30, drop a keyframe on the center, and then go to frame 12. And we're gonna bring the Y at 0.5. And we're gonna do the same thing here with the instance duplicate. We're gonna go at frame 30 and we're gonna drop a keyframe here on center and then go to frame 12. And we're gonna change the value to 0.5. Now if we play it, it's working, but it's not as smooth as we would like. To smooth that, we're gonna go over to the spline editor. Here, a quick trick that I enjoy using is simply to go to the menu right here and click show only selected tool. That means that now they will only show the keyframe of the node that I've selected. So in my case, I only want to have the transform. So I'm gonna select the transform, hold command on my keyboard and select two other nodes, which are the duplicate and the instance duplicate. And now I have just everything showing up here uh, in my spline editor. I'm just gonna tick the transform box uh, so it just show up. I'm gonna click zoom to fit. Then I'm gonna select all my point. Hit S on my keyboard to smooth out the curve. Then hit T to bring the ease in and ease out. And we're gonna increase the ease in at 100. And now if we play it, we have the animation in. Now we're gonna create the transition between the share, like, and subscribe. So we're gonna start with like. So I'm gonna link the output of my merge to my transform to bring it in the composition. Nothing is happening here. It's because my merge doesn't have a null background or a canvas. So here I'm just gonna take my background one here and I'm gonna link it here to my merge just to give it a canvas. Now I'm gonna go over to my text. And I'm gonna switch from share to like. I'm gonna select my merge two, hit shift space on my keyboard and bring a transform in. And basically we're gonna drag that like off screen and we're gonna bring it in the screen and while we're doing that we're gonna do the opposite with the share where we're gonna drag the share out of the screen so here i'm gonna start by going to frame 30 and i'm gonna put the center here at 1.5 which essentially we're gonna drag completely the like out of screen then i'm gonna drop a keyframe here on the position and i'm gonna go to frame 40 and then bring that value y to 0.5 then here we're gonna do the opposite with the transform one. So we're gonna select the transform one, go to frame 30, drop a keyframe here on the position, and then go to frame 40. And we essentially gonna do the exact same thing where we're gonna drag that down outside of the screen. So here we're gonna put minus 0.5. We're gonna adjust the animation. So here I'm gonna select my transform one, hold command on my keyboard and select my transform two. So I have those two selected and showing up in my spline editor. I'm gonna click zoom to fit. Then here select the point that we just dropped, hit S on our keyboard, and then here increase the easing to 100. And then here that's basically the animation that we got. We are simply gonna do some motion blur to make the transition a bit smoother, but we're gonna do that at the end of the composition. So right now we're just gonna create the subscribe transition. So we're gonna go from the like to subscribe exactly the same way we've been going from the share to the like. So here, I'm just gonna drag my media out, link the output of my merge here to this merge. We're gonna link the output of this background to the merge of the subscribe. And then here we're gonna switch the text from share to subscribe. Then here we're essentially gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna select my merge, hit shift space on my keyboard, bring a transform node. I'm gonna go to frame 50 and I'm gonna change the value to 1.5, drop a keyframe on it, then go to frame 60 and change the value back to 0 0.5. Then here we're gonna be doing a similar thing on the transform two, going back to the transform two here, go to frame 50, drop a keyframe on the initial position, then go to frame 60 and drag that down. So we're basically gonna just put it out of screen. So minus zero five. And then here I'm gonna select my transform two, hold command on my keyboard, select transform three. So everything is showing up here in my spline. Click zoom to fit, select my point, it S on my keyboard and then bring the easing at 100. 
And now we basically have our final animation. We're just gonna finalize that with some motion blur and a few little tweaks. So here I'm gonna make some space between my merge and my media out. I'm gonna select my merge, it shifts based on my keyboard and search for directional blur. I'm gonna bring that in. And then here, essentially, we're gonna add some blur when uh, the shift is happening to mask here that transition. So here I'm gonna go to frame 30. I'm gonna change the angle here to 90. We're gonna drop a keyframe here on the length. Then we're gonna go to frame 35 and we're gonna adjust the lens here to 0 0.02. Then go to frame 40, bring back the lens to zero. Then the next switch happen at frame 50. So I'm gonna drop here a keyframe on frame 50 at zero. Go to frame 55 and bring back again at 0 0.02 and then go to frame 60 and bring it back to zero. Then here I'm gonna select my point, but I'm not gonna select everything at once. Otherwise, I'm gonna create here a weird curve in between the two. So that's just gonna create a weird thing happening uh, right there between 40 and 50, where we're not supposed to have some animation. So we're gonna do it step by step. Here by selecting the first one, hitting S on our keyboard and bringing the easy in to 100. And then doing the same here by selecting the second one hit S on our keyboard and bringing the easy into 100 again. And that way, right here, we're keeping that line flat and it doesn't get weird value here between the 40 and the 50 frame. Now I'm gonna add some glow. So I'm gonna hit shift space on my keyboard and I'm gonna search for glow, bring that in. Here, I'm gonna bring the glow size down a little bit. Then I'm gonna bring a new background and I'm gonna unlink here the glow uh, from the media out and link it here to the background too and then link the output of that merge to the media out. Then here I'm gonna go to my background too and switch the color from black to more of a gray so right there and now we essentially have all final animation. One last thing that you can do is you can use a DVE to deform that and create some cool perspective effects. So I'm gonna select my glow here, hit she space and search for a DVE node, bring that in. And then you can just start to play around with the X, the Y and the Z value, as well as here the Z move to just zoom in or out and create the pattern that you want. So here in my case, I'm gonna go with minus 15 on the X, then with 15 on the Y, and then 15 on the Z. Then as you can see here, we're clipping the edges, so we're gonna need to zoom a little bit. So here I'm gonna just increase the Z move and zoom in my composition. I'm gonna move that a bit to the right, like so. Zoom a little bit more like that. Perfect, I'm happy with that. And now we can play it. Here we go, we got our final animation. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment what kind of video you'd like to see next. And see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videodetailstudio.com.